Hey, boys and girls, welcome back. Let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. We had just finished chapter three, and Jesse has found out that the bell was gone. So let's pick back up at chapter four, that bad feeling. Evan stared in amazement. The hole in the wall was gone. He and Pete had worked all day, first ripping out the damaged studs and replacing them with clean, dry wood, then trimming the old boards so that the ragged hole became a neat rectangle, then measuring and cutting and nailing in the new sheets of plywood. There was still the drywall to hang and the outside shingles to replace, but the hole was gone. Evan had never felt such a sense of accomplishment in his life, not even when he and Jesse had won the Labor Day poster contest at the end of summer. Now he was sweeping up the sawdust that lay as thick as carpet under his feet. Pete said no carpenter worth his salt leaves a mess behind at the end of the day. So Evan was sweeping up the sawdust and bent nails in small chips of wood, while Pete hauled the bender scraps out to the truck. But every once in a while, Evan stopped and held the broom still in his hands so that he could admire the work they had done. He couldn't wait to show his mom when he got back from the hospital. He was dumping the last pile of sawdust into the large gray plastic barrel when he heard loud clomping on the front porch, followed by the front door opening. Evan walked into the living room just as Jessie tried to step over the threshold wearing her snowshoes. Evan, the bell's gone! She tripped over the doormat and fell face first into the living room, landing hard on her hands and knees. Behind her was an older boy Evan had never seen before. He had funny looking cross country shoe boots on his feet and he was carrying a pair of ski poles. Evan guessed that he was at least 12, maybe 13. I can't get these off, said Jessie. She had rolled onto her back in the living room and was holding her feet up in the air. The snowshoes were dripping clumps of snow onto her face and floor. Help me, Evan. Oh, for Pete's sake, he said. He crossed over to where she was squirming and grabbed hold of one of the snowshoes. The boy had a funny smile on his face and was rocking back and forth one foot out in front of the other. Hey, said Evan as a way of introducing himself. You don't see that every day, said the boy looking at Jessie, who looked like a ladybug caught on her back. Yeah, actually I do, said Evan. Jessie was always tripping over something or getting caught on something or dragging something along behind her. Evan unclipped, unclipped one snowshoe and then the other and flipped them off Jessie's feet. The bell is gone, Evan, gone! What do you mean? Grandma's bell? Yes, the New Year's Eve bell! It can't be gone. You must have climbed the wrong hill. No, we didn't. The wooden post was there just like always, but the bell is gone. Evan shook his head. That thing weighs, I don't know, a hundred pounds. There's no way someone could just walk off with it. And besides, who would want to take it? Who wouldn't want to take it? Jesse asked, bouncing from one foot to the other. It's an antique and it's famous. It's not famous, Jesse, said Evan, shaking his head. Just because it's in that book doesn't make it famous. Well, it's worth $2,500. Is not. I'll show you. Jessie ran to the couch where she left the big book of bells that morning and pulled out a letter that was tucked into the back cover of the book. She handed it to Evan, who read it slowly, not understanding all the words, but getting the general idea. About five years ago, Grandma had had the bell appraised to find out how much it was worth, and Jessie was right. The letter said the bell was worth $2,500. Wow, said Evan. Maxwell bobbed his head several times, rocking back and forth on his feet. We've got to find it, said Jesse, pulling on Evan's arm. New Year's Eve is in three days. If we don't ring the bell on New Year's Eve, Jesse couldn't get the words out, and Evan knew what she was feeling. It was hard to imagine not ringing the bell on New Year's Eve. They had always done that for as long as he could remember. Evan looked at the boy and then back at his sister. Jesse, he half pointed at Maxwell, hoping his sister would get the hint, but as usual, she didn't. Uh, my name's Evan, he said to the boy, sticking out his hand in the way grown-ups did. 
How do you do, the boy said, or said the boy shaking Evan's hand. My name's Maxwell, I'm smart. Then he rocked forward on his left foot and shook his right hand in the air. Evan looked at him closely. Maxwell lives in the yellow house. The one with the big rock out front, said Jesse. He knows grandma really well. Yep, said Maxwell, I come here all the time. Maxwell was walking, rocking back and forth steadily now, snapping his right hand in the air with each forward motion. We watch TV and do puzzles and we feed the birds. And I'm smart, that's what Mrs. Joyce says, she says. Maxwell, you are smart. There was a moment of silence and then Evan asked, what grade are you in? Sixth grade, said Maxwell, Hardy Middle School, grade six. Mom's home, shouted Jesse, running from the front door. Evan had heard it too, the old suburban making its way up the long driveway. He hurried back into the kitchen. He wanted to get the trash barrel outside before his mom walked in. He was carrying it down the makeshift back steps he and Pete had rigged when Pete came around the house. Your grandma's home, so I'm heading out for the day, said Pete. We'll hang the drywall tomorrow, then we'll start the upstairs next day. Sound good? Yeah, sure, said Evan. He wanted to sound casual about it so Pete wouldn't think he, this was the first construction job he's ever done, but he couldn't keep the eagerness out of his voice. Okay then, see you tomorrow. Pete plugged in his headphones and headed for his truck. Evan walked back into the kitchen and took one more look around. It was definitely a disaster area, but they'd accomplished a lot. The wall was repaired and the back door was framed and hung and you could walk up and down the back steps if you were careful. Plus, it was a whole lot cleaner than it had been an hour ago. When Evan heard voices, mostly Jesse's in the living room, he hurried in to say hello. His grandmother stood just inside the doorway next to the coat rack and umbrella stand. Her winter parka, winter parka was draped over her shoulders as if it were a cape, and Evan could see that her arm was in a cast, cradled in a sling around her neck. She fumbled one-handed with a coat until Evan's mother took it from her and hung it up on the rack. Evan watched as Jesse tried to grab hold of Grandma's hand, but Grandma pulled her hand in, hunching forward protectively and covered the sling with her good arm as if she were afraid someone might try to steal something away from her. She began to walk toward the middle of the room, taking small steps, which was not all the way his grandmother's his grandmother usually walked. Then he stopped and looked at the stairs that led to the second floor and then back at the front door. It was her face that surprised Evan the most. It looked pale and she had bags under her eyes, which Evan had never noticed before. Most of all, she couldn't seem to settle her gaze on anything. Her eyes just kept flitting around the room like a bird that won't perch on anything. Jessie was hopping around like a bird too, chattering nonstop about the bell. Maximo was walking behind them, carrying his own conversation and making a strange puffing noise that sounded like he was trying to blow feathers out of his mouth. Evan's mother had an arm around his grandma, grandma's shoulder, guiding her slowly towards the couch. And when Evan caught sight of his mother's face, he knew right away that something was very wrong. Hi, Grandma, said Evan cheerfully from across the room, but Grandma didn't look at him. She's tired, said his mom. Jesse, would you please stop asking so many questions? Grandma needs a couple of minutes to get used to being home. Why, asked Jesse. Why do you need to get used to being home, Grandma? That doesn't make any sense. Jesse, shut it, said Evan, feeling a little panicked. What he really wanted to do was run up to his mother and get a hug from her. But with Maxwell standing right there, there was no way he was going to do that. Come see the kitchen, Grandma, said Jesse. See how good it looks. Jesse, warned her mother, you need to slow down. A cup of tea, said Grandma. That's what I need, a good strong cup of green tea. She started to walk towards the kitchen. Evan hurried ahead of her, scooping up two last stray nails that were on the formica counter. Then he stood beside the patched hole. His mother and grandmother walked into the kitchen, trailed by Jesse and Maxwell, who had finally stopped talking. Everyone looked at Evan and the repair work that he and Pete had done that day. It was his grandmother who spoke first. What is this? What happened here? Mom, said Mrs. Tresky, there was a fire. Do you remember the fire? 
where's my stove? How am I going to make my tea without my stove? The stove was ruined, Grandma, said Jessie. They had to take it out because it was no good anymore. What do you mean, Jessie? asked Grandma. Who did this? Where was I? She looked at Mrs. Tresky. Susan, what has been going on here? Mom, you don't see that every day, said Maxwell, rocking back and forth nervously. His right, right hand snapped in the air like he was cracking a whip on an imaginary horse. No, you certainly don't, Maxwell, said Evan's grandma. You certainly don't. Grandma, said Evan, it's going to be okay. Me and Pete are fixing the whole thing. We're going to work some more tomorrow. We'll get it just the way it used to be. Evan can feel that bad feeling rising up in him. The feeling he got just before taking a test. The feeling he sometimes got late at night when the house was too quiet and too dark and he wished his dad had never left. For the first time that afternoon, Evan's grandmother looked right at him. She peered sharply at his face and then looked him over once from top to bottom. She turned to Evan's mom. Who is that boy? She asked angrily. Did he do this to my kitchen? Mom, said Mrs. Tresky, it's Evan, your grandson. Evan's grandmother shook her head. I don't know him. Make him go away. Wow, it seems like a lot is happening from this chapter. At this time, go ahead and complete today's activities that go along with the chapters we've read. Don't forget to stop and jot as you're reading. <laughs>